Okay, welcome to this next King video. So we're starting right here in Magnolia Offida, and we're going to just, just dig right into it. So one says, perianth consisting of sepals or lacking, sepals when present resembling, resembling petals in color and or shape. And if we look here, if we look at these individual flowers, okay, this area right here, we don't see, we're either lacking sepals or they resemble petal, petals in color and shape. So we're gonna move to two. And I've left some of the stem here and we can see that this is not woody or at least the base was only woody. You can see a lot of herbaceous parts of the plant here. So we're gonna go on to group two. Now, if we go here to group two, we can ask if the ovary is inferior or superior, and this in ovary is superior, and we'll look more closely at that in a second. And so we move on to seven, and pistils several to many in each flower. And as we get in here, we can actually see that that's not the case, and you can kind of see it in some of these here, but generally, uh, the next picture will show that we need to move on to eight. Now, this is asking here in eight if the plants are submerged or floating aquatics. And this particular plant is from the Dragon Utah video. And so it was not that at all, and it was actually growing in wet soil. And so we go to nine. And on nine, it says perianth lacking entirely, the whorl of bracts beneath the flowers resembling a hypanthium. And this is not the case. There is a perianth present. And then we're going to move. So we're going to move to 10. And it's asking if the flowers are perigenous or hypogenous. And we're going to look up the first one, this word right here and see what that looks like. Okay, so we're going to come here and see what perigenous means. And that's without stamens, petals, and sepals born on a calyx tube surrounding, but not, excuse me, with that, but not actually attached to the superior ovary. And we're going to look more closely at it, but this is the case. And if you go back and look at the key, uh, whether you want to rewind the video, I actually suggest you look at your book while you're looking at this. You can see that the that with this present, we're going to be in nictagenaceae. And, and the reason we're in nictagenaceae is because the petals, excuse me, the leaves are opposite. And if you go back to that Dragon Utah video, you'll actually see this fragrant sand or verbena, and you this abronia fragrance, and because when we get to this genus, excuse me, to this family in our key, we're going to ask if the flowers are cream colored and the herbage is glandular to pubescent. And there's a some hairs, but it's mostly pubescent. And if you look, then that's in the floral parts, but if you again, recall to that dragon video, this is very clear. And again, this is not a red or purple flower. So in this particular key, our only option here is this fragrant San Verbena or Abronia fragrance. Okay, our second fl flower is actually one of my favorites and it's uh, enjoyable to key. So it's in Magnolia Offida as well. And we see that the perianth isn't only sepals. It's not lacking sepals. And the sepals are present and they don't resemble this. So we're going to move on. And perianth consisting of both sepals and petals. So we've got sepals and we've got petals. So we're going to move to three. And petals united at least slightly. And you can see uh, red wasn't the right color. But you can see here that these petals are united. And so we're going to move on to group three. Okay, we're in group three. And 
You'll be able to see even better later, but this ovary is superior. So we're going to immediately go to nine. And we're asking if there are more than five stamens or if there are five or fewer. And there are, in fact, five or fewer. And we'll look inside this flower a little bit more later. And so we're moving to 15. Uh, the plants are not yellow or whitish. They are green. So we're moving to 17. And the corolla is not irregular. It's regular. And so we move to 22. And we ask if the plants have milky juice or they are without milky juice. And by or singularly pistillate. And this is that so we're moving on to 24 okay so we see the floral parts a lot better here uh, we can see that ovary position right here and we can see a lot of this other information so we're at 24 and we're seeing if the stamens are opposite the corolla lobes or alternate with the corolla lobes and we can look and see that this space right here is alternate of this leaf here okay and so that's going to move us to 25 and this is not a small corolla it's a larger corolla okay so we're moving to 26 and we're looking to see if the ovary is four lobed and you can see here as well that this does not have a four lobed ovary so we're moving to 27 and one thing I did not get an up close picture of was the three cleft style okay and but this is a three cleft style when you look closely it's apparent and that's polymoniaceae okay and so now that we're here we're gonna go to that genus excuse me to that family okay here we are in the book of Utah flora because I'd like to get in a little more to this particular genus now there's going to be words I reference and I don't directly identify and I'd really like for you to go through those some of them I'll talk about okay so in this case when we go to this first situation uh, foliage leaves are proper present and that's the key difference here that's going to lead us to two and so two takes us to leaves mostly opposite uh, or leaves mostly alternate and this is definitely the case if you review the the video from the dragon utah field trip that's where this plant comes from and it has alternate leaves so we can move on to eight and the leaves are not palmetophid they aren't pungent and so we're, we're, we're here at leaves various, okay? And that's gonna take us to nine and they are not simple, excuse me, they are simple and they are, the, they are panatophid. And so that's gonna take us to 11. And here we are, we're again following with that distinct panatophid leaf to 12. And calyx lobes unequal, leaves panatophid, the rake is narrow. So if you look at this, we've got a the sub equal calyx lobes. And again, panatophid leaves on here to 13. Leaves with bristle tip teeth or lobes. That's not the case. And this right here, this spinulose apiculate or acute to rounded teeth. That's actually the key. And if you look at the leaves and and you review these words again, this is this is getting deep here and I just want to move through this. But it's a capitate inflorescence. This solver form corolla shape. And specifically here, it's this throat color not contrasting with that of the tube is in Ipomopsis here. And, and that is our genus. So we're here in Ipomopsis. And to get here, 
honestly, you, you need leaves. And notice there was a lot of the whole plant morphology that I went through and kind of breezed through. Feel free to reach out to contact me if you need any more information about this particular keying. It was kind of complicated and I did breeze through some of it. And again, it was due to the, the leaves, which I, I had in the field, but I did not take with me to take pictures of. But I wanted to go through because there's a lot of those words that I even still need the plant identification and terminology book. So now if you remember, the pan, those were paniculate or there were panicle clusters very similar to a, a, just a traditional panicle structure on that plant from the video. And so we can move to two and find that there were these scarlet bright red scarlet flowers and that's this scarlet gilia or skyrocket it's this ipomopsis aggregata and if you read this here you can see it's a very clear description of it particularly this feature here this odor of a skunk and it is a very very strong smell so you just pick it up and, and you, you'll notice immediately that you've found this flower. Okay, here we are with a very complicated genus that we're just going to key right to genus. And so if we look here, we see that perianth is consisting of both sepals and petals. And we'll look closer at that in a moment. And we can see very clearly that these are united petals. So we're here in group three. Now in the next picture, you'll see that we have a superior ovary, which is going to take us to nine. So we're here back at nine and we see that there are five or fewer stamens. And we'll look at that more closely here in a minute as we open this flower up in the preceding slides. But five or fewer stamens so we move to 15 green plants and these green plants take us to 17 where we have a regular corolla and that's pretty clear again in some further pictures so we move on to 22 there is a single pistil and plants without milky juice so that's this guy right here and that moves us on to 24 and when we are at 24, one of the things that we'll see, and I'll point out, is that the stamens are alternate with the corolla lobes, okay? And larger corolla without parallel leaf veins, it's not Plantagenaceae. And one of the pictures, we'll see really clearly that it is a four-lobed ovary, and therefore Boraginaceae. And as we move forward, We'll see. Okay, a couple of things. We can see the quite a bit here in this one. One, you can sort of see these lobes on the ovary and the single here, as well as you can see a little bit better the structure. And we'll talk a little bit more about the structure and how that pertains here in a minute but so when we come here we see that the corolla is regular and it's not a two cleft style at the tip so we move on to two and there is a style present and we saw here that these were deeply lobed deeply four lobed so we can move on to three and we'll see that we're asking if nutlets have hooked or barbed prickles on their back margin or apex. And in this case, we actually have nutlets without hooked or barbed prickles. So we're moving to six. And stems with long vertical ridges possessing stiff downward pointing bristles. And I don't have a picture of the stem here, but the, that was not the case. And so we move to seven and sevens has us identifying with a white Corolla, which we have. And so we move on to nine and inflorescence, not helicoid nutlets attach the receptacle only at their base. And 
nutlets here, when we look closely, are attached to the receptacle along their ventral surface, and the there is a somewhat helicoid inflorescence. So we can move then on to 10 and see that we have, again, a white or bicolored with a yellow center corolla. And that brings us to 11, which is this very complex genus, Cryptantha. And that's where we're going to stop with this particular plant. Just to note, here we see the male parts being alternate with the leaves and the plate, this connection of the nutlets, as well as a more defined view here of that four lobes. Okay, we're back in Magnoliophyta, and this is another very, very beloved plant by me, and this entire family, and this genus in particular. So we see that we have a pretty clear group two plant. It's herbaceous and it fits this description very clearly. So we've, we'll be able to see in other pictures, but it's got a superior ovary position. And so we're moving on to seven and there are several to many pistils in each flower which is again going to be clear as we dig in there. And this is something in this family, Ranunculiaceae, that you will find. Now, uh, this, when we get to Ranunculiaceae, this plants climbing vines, Clematis, this is a very beautiful plant I expect you'll encounter. I'm, I've got a video from the Uintas that has an example of this coming soon. But this is not a climbing vine, and it has these lobed leaves that, once you've seen a lot of them, tempt you to identify this by just by the leaves, but that's unwise. But they are distinct leaves, so we've moved on to three. And we can see that there is a corolla present. So we're on four, very irregular flowers. And we can see some of the internal structure here in the ovary position. And so we are going to six. The flowers are not white and they are bluish purple. An urn shaped spur, which is the case here. And we have a calyx with a narrow urn-shaped spur. And that is this genus, Delphinium. So this does have narrow leaf segments and they were sh are shorter than this other type. And this is this Delphinium natalium. And again, here you can see even closer some of those, those features that I, we couldn't see as we were keying through. Okay, last plant here. And this has a perianth that consists of both sepals and petals. And the petals are separate. And there are few stamens, not more than twice as many as the petals. So we're in group five. And we have a single pistol. We have one style, so we're moving on to 17. And go ahead and pay attention to some of these features, but we are looking at a superior ovary with an herbaceous plant. So here we are moving to 27. Okay, so we're here at 27, where we've got 
here's the sepals and some of them are removed but there's four of them so we're going to want to move on to 33 33 with our regular flowers is to 35 and this plant had very simple leaves they were not compound leaves or appearing so they were simple leaves so we're on 40. We go all the way down here to 40 and we see that sepals and petals four. So there's those four sepals and here's one, two, three, and the fourth one we've removed of the petals. And there are one, two, three, four, five, and in there six stamens. And so we are in cruciferae, AKA brassicaceae. Okay, calling leaves, at least some auriculate, sometimes only slightly so. And these, the, the calling leaves in, in this are auriculate. And you're probably asking, what, what does that mean? And auriculate means with auricles. And an auricle is an ear shaped appendage. So, you know, say we're looking at a leaf that has a small little bump like this. This is going to be an auricle, okay? So that's the case. So we're moving on to two. Uh, petals yellow, plants glabrous or with simple hairs only. Petals white, pink, lavender, chestnut, or purple, but not yellow. Plants glabrous or variously pubescent. And so there were hairs in the last picture, uh, but the key here too is that these are these white or pink flowers. So we're moving on to three. Plants glabrous or with simple hairs only. And that is the case. There were simple hairs and some some hairs so so we're looking to key two okay so we're in key two here in cruciferae or brassicaceae and immediately where we have these terrestrial plants it was not aquatic uh, but i hope you'll find a nasturtium they're a beautiful plant and a lot of fun to key out and so we're going to two and the flowers if we look at these two options here we find our flowers white pink so we're at three and limb of petal four to six millimeters long and sepals four to seven millimeters long and if you get out something and you measure it you find that that is the correct answer and this genus is Thelopodiopsis. Now you'll actually be able to see in there's not a lot of options and the option in the key isn't what this is is actually a different Thelopodiopsis than because it's right on the Colorado border but if you look in that video you can see what specific species it is but this definitely will take you there. All right, that is the end of this video. And if you've got any questions, please reach out to me. If you have, see that I, if you don't follow my, my king or you, I did something wrong that you see, reach out, let me know. And please keep collecting your plants. Thanks.